40.75% that was the profit in the last lucid trade. And for this week I have a new stock which I will buy into the $1,000 challenge where I try to grow $1,000 as fast as I can and as much as I can. A new week is here. You're listening to the Stock Invest uh, podcast trading tips with Jim as we head into week six. Last week was a good week for Nasdaq of 1.19%, but it was the end of the week and especially Meta pulling Nasdaq up. Meta with fantastic numbers and even reporting the first dividend ever for the company. Good thing for Zuckerberg who uh, will receive quite much money. Dow Jones also had a good week up 1.43% for Dow Jones to $38,654. Last week was full of quarter results. This week will be full of quarter results as well, but not so many of the big hitters. Among those uh, coming this week is uh, Disney. I believe it's Wednesday. Disney will come uh, with their quarter results. That's maybe one of the biggest Palantir will be today, that's an exciting company and I expect some movements for uh, Palantir today together with McDonald's and Caterpillar by the way. Tomorrow on Tuesday we will have Eli Lille Spotify and Chipotle earnings. On uh, Thursday uh, we will have Pinterest and Expedia. Friday nothing really, I think it will be Pepsi on Friday. So they will come during the week, uh, different companies, and you of course have to know when your company has earnings so you are sure what is happening. The big thing last week was of course Nvidia and Meta really boosting uh, the markets. And before Meta and Nvidia released their quarter results, the average of the companies releasing uh, results were down by more than a percent from the previous uh, quarter. But the good results in <laughs> Meta and Nevida actually make four quarter results so far to be better than last quarter by 1.6% if I'm not mistaken. Now uh, last week uh, had another thing. Powell was speaking and Powell was said that uh, well I'm not sure interest rates will go down as uh, fast as you think and they shouldn't because there are things in the economy that is still way too hot. The job numbers uh, is one of them came in above expectations last week. And just let me uh, give a few uh, points about these things about inflation interest rates before uh, before new year it was 80 plus percent chance that interest rates would be start cutting from march i told you then uh, that um, i'm not sure that will happen and gave you all the reason why i didn't think that will happen uh, and uh, now it seems like it will not happen because it's only 20 percent chance in the market for uh, expectations for rate cuts in march sorry if you have a lot of uh, debt doesn't uh, seem like uh, interest rates will go down by the very very first now that puts uh, fed into somewhat hard position because the money supply uh, is falling you want that to some degree but not too much the m1 the m2 m1 money supply is the amount of money that you have more or less in your pocket m2 just includes uh, a different savings uh, and uh, money that you can get to very very fast if you need to um, release cash you can sell uh, stocks funds etc money that has high liquidity is considered into m2 and m2 was falling uh, 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 is currently falling and every time that has happened before has been met by a uh, catastrophe in the work uh, market and depressions have followed the big difference and we here we go back all the way to 1873 uh, and every time this thing happened that the money supply was uh, shrinking less money available in the market you had a depression uh, following depression the unemployment rate skyrocket above uh, two digits uh, before finally getting back on track 
the increase in the interest rates had one purpose uh, it was to slow down the spending of course because the inflation was way too high so uh, but other things uh, are happening now the big thing in this picture is that uh, during uh, the worst of the COVID, uh, governments were just printing money like crazy, uh, sending checks, thousand dollar checks everywhere, uh, almost to empty post box. Whoever wanted a thousand dollars got a thousand dollars and they just kept doing that. And that, of course, uh, all that money printing caused a huge increase in the money supply uh, by trillions of US dollars. This reaction back may just be a natural reaction back uh, from that, but it is a warning sign and we should take it seriously. The job numbers, uh, as I said, came in above expectations, but if you look behind the job numbers, there is a quite many things uh, that is disturbing because you read one thing uh, and one thing you read last week was that the big companies, they are laying off people at record speed. All of the bigger companies are just laying off people and signaling that they will lay off even more people. At the same time, the job numbers come in very strong. So what is happening? Well, one of the things that is happening is that uh, work participant is at the lowest number that it has been in decades of decades in the United States. I think it's only 69% or so. Uh, and uh, that just means that many people, they are just outside the work market, they either get too much benefits, uh, so it's no need to be in the work market, kind of like Norway, by the way. Uh, and th that then, of course, if you have less people uh, in the workforce, then unemployment rate, of course, uh, will be lowered by the number and then we have all the governmental spendings and where these employees are being etc still good good uh, indeed that it's low it means that uh, is uh, workforce but it's a bothering for the fed uh, who signals that interest rates shouldn't go down uh, as soon uh, as expected because of this and a few other things so uh, this, what will all of this do to the stock market? We know that the stock market is high. We do know that the prices, the stock prices by themselves, if we look at the stock price compared to earnings and we can look at book values and a few other things, we know that the stock prices, the price of a company is very, very high as we speak for many companies, not all companies, but for many, many companies. That by itself signaling that there should be a correction now. If you look at the chart, well, the chart says that the Nasdaq is in a rising trend. Everything indicates that it should continue within the trend, but it is overbought on the long term chart. It's at the top of the chart that is indicating that it should have a natural reaction back. Hitting uh, 16,000 in that we might have a double top. Spoke about that a few podcasts back. Uh, no mood uh, to repeat that today. You just have to rewind some podcast parts. I told you what will happen if we get a double top. Where will we end, etc. Take the money supply. Take the fact that uh, Nasdaq is at the upper trend being overbought. Take into context what is happening in the Mediterranean, what uh, is happening with all the tension. Iran is almost at the bottom of war. Uh, and uh, uh, we have more Taiwan, we have all of this. Ukraine, all of this conflict is just an endless increase in uh, geopolitic, uh, geopolitical tension. Uh, despite we were promised to have the best, best of the best with the, the 2020 election and all that uh, stuff well here we are world is at a scary place stock market right now is at a good place but will it last well i'm just telling you geopolitical tensions are increasing m2 m1 is showing retraction uh, stock prices is overvalued now for most of them personally I am reducing uh, my portions of shares in the stock market, uh, my exposure in the stock market. For those who follow, I've been doing this podcast more than four years. This is the fifth season of this podcast. You heard me when COVID came, uh, market was crashing. You heard me. I'm buying, I'm buying. I bought in three phases. I didn't hit the very bottom. I explained to you that you seldom do. 
but the average was extremely good. I bought in, in three phases. I got 100% exposure in the market because it was oversold. Then as market moved upward to 16,000, I sold out. I was down at 30%, maybe even less than 30% uh, at the very high because I said, no, the market is way too high. Markets, of course, fell. Nasdaq fell all the way to 10,800 or 500, somewhere around there. And then you heard me say that now I will increase again, and I've been increasing a little bit, but not the way as I did during COVID. Now I'm telling you that I am personally reducing my exposure into the market. It doesn't mean that you should. I'm just telling what I am doing because there are signs that the good times may soon come to an end. It may not be this week, it may not be next week, but there are really strong signals that the fun might be over for some time. Will it just be a natural correction within the trend where you have a 3 to 5 to 6 percent uh, reaction down for Nasdaq, or will it be worse? We will have to deal with that when we come, but there are some, some major things happening uh, in the market, and we will see. Now go and check any news channel that you want, any financial news channel that you want, and you get mixed signals. Some saying that we're heading for a huge crash, some saying we're heading for the best year uh, in a long, long time. Impossible uh, to make up your mind with all that. I'm just following my guts. And my guts tells me that it's time to secure some of all the profit made in this last uptime. As I, uh, as I told you, I've been into oil uh, and I've been uh, into several of the things that had such a good, good after. Oil, by the way, still at $72, and with all that uh, tension in the Mediterranean Sea, we can just expect oil and energy prices to remain high. Ships are now sailing outside the Mediterranean, causing longer time to market, causing more cost to market. This cost has to be offloaded. It should be offloaded to interest. Uh, it should be offloaded to the end consumer, meaning that there is pressure on inflation, meaning that the interest rates still will be personally and will not be. I will not not. Now we have the slight reaction back, but I think the interest rates will have to go higher. That's my personal opinion. And we will just see what uh, will uh, be. That, of course, high interest rates cause uh, some tension for gold. You know that I went into gold at $1,600 per per ounce, currently sitting at $2,040 per ounce. I believe gold should just continue upwards, but in an environment of high interest rates and expectations of high interest rates, gold is not as attractive. It's very, very simple, and also one of the reasons why the market may struggle as we move a little bit forward. If interest rates remain high, it means that you get uh, good, safe money and return on your money in the bank. It's just as easy as that. When the interest rates go down, you do not get any interest rates in the bank. You do not get any return on your money in the bank. So you may put more into the markets, the stock markets, fueling the stock market. So what happens? Pavel said it. Interest rates shouldn't go down. Went from 80% probability down to 20% currently for cut in uh, March. So what happens now when the stock market doesn't have that fuel, this uh, anticipation of interest rates going down, pushing more money into the market? M2, M1, uh, M1, M2 is also going down. Available cash in the money is going down. So what, what is happening? 10-year treasury yield is at 404, and I expect it will remain somewhat the same, maybe even start to increase a little bit again. What do the buy signals and the sell signals say? Well, they say that the market is in somewhat balance because across all, it's 34% buy signals, so it's somewhat okay. Nasdaq only 30%, which is not very low. It's uh, somewhat medium, but it was a little higher, 35% last week. So how come Nasdaq went up, buy signals go down? Well, if you checked during the week, you would see that in more or less every day it was 60 percent of all stocks were falling uh, during uh, the trading day most stocks did but the nasdaq and the index was pushed up by the heavy hitters last week while most of the stocks were falling new york stock exchange 34 uh, london 34 
Frankfurt 36, Tokyo 48, very, very high in Tokyo. They're having good days in the markets there. While chess in China is only 2%. Not sure if that is correct or we have a bug in the system because 2% is extremely low, but we do know China is struggling a bit. It doesn't hold that to be accountable call because it should be a buying opportunity of a lifetime. Now, if uh, and when uh, these numbers are very low, it is a buying opportunity. This number in uh, China, I don't trust 2%, but it was 12% last week, a week before that it was 7 and 19, so it's, it is very low. Indicates to me that Chinese stocks traded in the United States may have a upside. Goes for NIO uh, and some of uh, these Alibaba and other stocks, they may have an upside. I decided when starting the podcast uh, not to make it a long one. I will keep that promise for the week ahead of us. I'm not sure uh, exactly what will happen in Nos- uh, with, the, uh, with Nasdaq. It may move up, it may move down. My, my bet is that it actually will move down. I'm telling you that I think there is a huge chance as we move forward that the market may get into a wider and bigger correction down. How do you play it? That's up to you. Personally, I am doing two things. I reduced my exposures in the market. I'm doing that. Did that a little bit last week. Will continue this week to reduce my exposure. The other thing I do is going into more secure stocks, less volatility. Yes, I may lose on the upturn. Uh, uh, but again, if there is really bad days, that will save me a bit. The third thing and the most important thing that I can teach you, I try to teach you for four years now, is use stop loss. We are very different, you and me. Some of you listening uh, to this podcast is way too emotional. Some of you are stone cold uh, killers. You follow the rules. You sell when the stop loss is there. You sell on the levels that you set. Even when it goes up, you just execute, execute. But most of you, you will not be able to do that because you hope too much. You hope that the stock will regain. Following it down, down, down. And to make it even worse, many of you are sitting with leveraged positions, meaning that you have borrowed uh, a lot of the money in the trade. uh, And uh, you have either short intervals where everything will be executed, meaning that it will be sold so you lose all your investment uh, if it falls below a certain threshold some of you have a lot of money some of you do not have a lot of money some of you have good brokers some of you do not have good brokers some of you pay high commission some of you do not pay a very good commission Uh, based on all of this the best thing i could do is just try to give you my opinion of the general market try to teach you a few uh, tips and tricks how to improve prove so you can fit your trading to the things uh, that interest you the sector or market that interests you and of course according to what you can afford and not that is why uh, i don't uh, list too many stocks because i personally really love if a stock go up three percent and many times i can pick three percent quite easily because three percent is really really good money but for most of you it is absolutely nothing it doesn't even cover the commission for all of this, we have the $1,000 challenge where I try to grow $1,000 as fast as I can. We've been in and out of a few stocks. Uh, before Lucid, we were into NIO. had to take a loss in NIO. Before that, it was up more than 50%. had to take a loss in NIO. fell down a little bit. Then I said, I see the upside in Lucid. First week of the Lucid trade was not the best. I bought Lucid for 265 but last week it fired up on all engines hitting 388 high then starting to fall a little bit back it was cut uh, at 373 giving 40.75 percent profit for lucid so there is quite some money in the one thousand dollar challenge chest uh, right now but i will stay into one stocks as i told you i will try to grow it as fast as i can i will slowly then as i grow it go out to more stocks and we will play a bit differently but for the beginning i will go into high high risk stocks take the chance uh, of being wrong and that is the thing with high risk uh, comes high uh, possibilities but also high losses possible high profits but also possible high losses 
what will I do this one uh, this week? Which stock will I try to buy today? Uh, I will buy it. I will post on the YouTube video when I buy it. Probably I will buy it some half hour after exchange open. Uh, I will try to see how things will go. Then I will buy it. I will buy a hair test systems working with semiconductors, testing semiconductors, etc. A hair test systems. H E H R A E H R. The ticker are here, test systems. Now, uh, oversold on the relative strength index for 21. Struggling has huge, uh, currently sitting somewhere around 1470 or whatever it is. Huge resistance at 15 to 16 dollars. It will be a struggle to go through there. It can easily fall down, but if it breaks 16, it should easily go up to 20, maybe even 22. That is what I'm gambling on. Being oversold, having Nivida doing so good last week, still that pressure on ai maybe even more so this week as market will get more selective i think a uh, a uh, test system can benefit from this has not all reaction up uh, the trend is downward in the long term so it's not a long-term investment we are just in we are out trying to make the best we can during a week sometimes we have to sit two weeks we will see how it will go i will try to buy a hair test systems as cheap as i can today Post it on Facebook, the number, uh, the, the, the price that I buy out so you can see the trade yourself. 21 minutes into the podcast. Uh, let's just quit it there. Hope that you will have a super week that when we get to the uh, next week, your portfolio is much greener than in the beginning of the week. Just have a good, good week and hope we'll be back uh, for next week's episode. Until then, bye. Welcome to StockInvest.us Stock Analysis. We remind you that trading involves a high risk of losing money and that you should speak with a financial advisor before buying or selling any securities. You should not base your investment decision upon StockInvest.us. By using the information you agree and are held liable for your own investment decisions.